Well, I, I think we have to make a distinction between what will be the, the next big thing in terms of new ideas versus what will be the next big thing. Um, microservices are definitely on the list for what will be the next big thing, and they've got a lot of backing behind them. Um, but in many ways, they're a rebranding of older ideas. Um, in terms of new ideas that are really coming to the forefront, um, there's a lot happening in particular with machine learning. And more and more companies are realizing that they're actually software companies, not, let's say, an insurance company. And they are going through and they're starting to learn how to apply machine learning to a whole slew of different problems. And I think you'll see a lot of innovation coming in this space. It depends what kind of cycle you're in. And I, I gave a couple examples of cycles. Um, some of the cycles that we saw were cycles where we continued building complexity into problems and making things more and more general to the point that they became useless and no one was interested in them anymore. Um, UML might be an example of this, going from simple drawings on a whiteboard all the way up to executable UML where I don't even write code anymore, I code in UML. In those cases, um, my guess would be focusing on business value as opposed to trying to generalize all of the problems would be a really good start. Um, for other cycles, um, like the one we were talking about with microservices, um, those cycles are more so because people aren't understanding the first ideas and what's ending up happening is they constantly get reinvented over and over and over again. Um, for those it's a much more difficult problem because a lot of people don't understand the old ideas and it's just a reinvention cycle um, and I don't think that'll ever be fixed. It, it exists in almost every industry today. If you're in an early stage of a product, um, it may or may not be a good idea. If you're, if you're in the middle or late stage of a product where you actually have working software, it becomes very difficult to justify that I'm going to bring in something new inside of working software unless I'm gaining some value out of it. Um, it's very rare that doing a large rewrite will actually pay itself off in terms of business value. At the end of the day, the, the people that are using your software, they don't care what frameworks you're using in the back. They don't care that you stored your data in Cassandra as opposed to storing it in Oracle. Um, usually, and of course there's exceptions to every rule, but as a rule they don't care about these things. Aside from that, you have to look at what your software actually is, what it does. Um, for a lot of systems, they're, they're relatively small, they're relatively low risk. Um, they are not running nuclear power plants, there is no, uh, no one's heart being monitored by it. For a lot of these kinds of systems, we can use bleeding edge stuff because it may not be too big of a deal, and if it goes horribly wrong, it may be a low-cost thing to get out of it. Um, normally, in such decisions, what I would recommend people to look at is known as options price, uh, an options pricing model. So I can do this, but if I fail, what are my costs? What is my probability of cost? What is my time value if I want to hold this and make the decision later? So if I want to delay a decision, how much will it cost me? Um, but in general, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using brand new stuff that may not be battle tested if it's a low cost failure for me. If it's a high cost failure for me, then I really need to think about it. And normally sitting and talking with teams and bringing them through, let's say an options pricing model and applying it to our specific project can go a long way.